farmer was out working in the fields, probably wearing tall muck boots this year, and uh, was working in the fields when he saw someone drive by and pull over to the side of the road, beckoned him over. The farmer went over to say hey, and uh, after some pleasant trees, the, the guy driving, driving a car full to the brim with all of the uh, boxes and clothes and furniture of a life that's obviously moving, um, the guy asks, I need to find a place to settle down. Looking for a small town I can settle. Uh, what, what are people like around here? And the, the farmer asks, well, what type of people are you leaving behind? And the guy driving says, well, they were gossips, cheats, and slanderers. And the farmer looks at him and says, well, that's a shame. That's the type of people you'll find here. Mosey on down the road. Better luck next time. Guy rolls up his window and off he goes. Later that same day, same farmer working in that same field. Uh, another car pulls over, beckons him over. He goes over, and same type of situation. A guy was, had packed up all his life and was looking for a place to settle and uh, asks, what type of people will I find here? And the farmer asks, well, what type of people did you leave behind? And the guy says, they were saints. They were generous, they were gracious, they were kind, trustworthy people. And the farmer says, you're in luck. That's the type of people you'll find here. Motel's up on the left. I'll help you unpack. No tricks, no surprises, same farmer, same town. Only difference is who's asking, right? Who's asking? You ever notice that um, you can move, but you bring your problems with you? <laughs> and, the pers and the way that if whatever you have a problem with yourself, you start to see that in others. The I have noticed the person who, who I can't trust to tell the truth doesn't trust others to tell the truth. The person who lies sees other people as liars. The person who steals, the person who hates, the person who holds a grudge, they see that same thing in others. And I, and I think it makes sense why this happens, because I'm normal, and y'all are normal too, right? Y'all are just normal people. Y'all have just completely normal, right? And if you're normal, that means everyone else is just like you. And so if you're normal and that's what you do, that's what everyone else must do, because you're normal. Right? And so if I'm normal, and I can't tell the truth, and I know it, I assume that you're not either. And if I gossip, then I'm assuming that you're going to gossip too. And it ends up being a, a kind of a, a self-punishing thing, right? If, I, if I'm a gossip, and I'm always talking smack about others, and I see other people talking, what I think they're doing? They're talking smack. And who are they talking smack about? Well, I'm not in the room, so who are they talking? They must be talking smack about me, right? So judge not lest ye be judged by that same measure. This whole judgment thing, the way we judge others... Uh, reflects back onto us, and pun it ends up being oddly self-punishing. The person who drives into town having left a community in which he or she saw a bunch of gossips, cheats, and slanders would only see the same thing in the next town. And the person who drives into town having left a community in which he saw a bunch of wonderful, gracious, and humble people, that is what he will find in the next town. How we judge others, the opinion we hold of others, often says more about us than about the person about whom we have an opinion, doesn't it? For the judgment that you make, that's how you will be judged. Right? My sin, what I see, impacts how I see your sin. That, that Jesus talks about this, the log and the splinter, right? That uh, how do you dare say anything about your neighbor's splinter if you have a log in your own eye? There's a connection there, right? A log is a big piece of wood, and what's a splinter? A small piece of wood. Where did the splinter come from? Right? Big piece of wood. So where where'd they learn it? If I have a log in my own eye and that's what I'm I'm messing up, might they have learned it from me? Right? Or can you see very well with a log in your eye? No. I almost brought a log just to try to see if anyone could use a splinter with a uh, uh, tweezers with a log in front of them, but won't do that to you. But you know, if, if there's a log in your eye, uh, might the splinter in the other person's eye just kind of be bad sight on your part, right? bad sight on my part, that, that I can't see clearly. It might be a reflection of the thing that's in my own eye. Jesus is talking about judging here. Don't judge, uh, lest you, you be judged by that own measure. 
And what he doesn't say is don't judge, period. That's what we often hear. This is one of the most commonly uh, quoted verses in Scripture. And we hear people say, you know, you're a Christian, you shouldn't judge, don't judge. There's not a period there, though, is there? It, it, there actually isn't periods or commas in Greek at all. But it, it, there's definitively not. I mean, if there was anything, it'd be a comma. Don't judge, lest you be judged by that same measure. But what we often hear is this idea of don't judge, because Jesus says we should just get along with everything. Accept everything, just don't judge. And even if we do have an opinion about it, don't say anything about it, because don't judge. Eh, that's not actually what Jesus says here, right? Jesus doesn't say, don't judge and let the splinter just stay in your neighbor's eye. He doesn't say, don't judge and if someone's doing something stupid, just ignore it, walk past. Don't, don't do anything about it. He says, first get the log out of your own eye, then go get the tweezers. Then you can help your neighbor to get the tweezer, or the splinter out of their own eyes. So if we are to judge and we are to help, and Jesus is saying, get the log out, then you can help your neighbor with the splinter, first we have to get the log out of our own eye. I mean, this, this is, before we would dare inquire into another person's life, we need to be cleansing our soul with more care than a doctor scrubbing before surgery. Jesus clearly teaches his disciples that we are to make judgments, both by what he said and by what he did. Jesus says, you shall judge a tree by its fruit. Was he talking about trees? All right. When Jesus said, judges those who tithe 10% of their dill but do not tend to the creating of a just society, that, that's a problem, right? You can ten, tithe 10% of your dill every day. You can go out and take 10% of all your maters, 10% of all your onions, 10% of everything out of your garden. Then if you don't do anything about your neighbor who's going hungry, you, Jesus has a word to say about that. That's a judgment, right? Jesus judges those who look good and focuses on appearances to the neglect of that which is important. He calls the Pharisees uh, tombstones, right? Glistening white on the outside and dead on the inside. That, that's a judgment. Jesus meets this woman who has committed adultery, and he says, you know, you who is without sin, throw the first stone. No one throws the stone, but he doesn't look at the woman and say, you know what, you've committed adultery. I want you to go back and shack up with that guy again, and then next week move on to the next guy, right? Jesus does not say, go commit adultery again. Jesus says, go and leave that sin behind. That's a judgment. Jesus judges, and we who are disciples of Jesus make judgments as well. Even to say don't judge is in a sense a judgment. And your judgment of the idea of saying don't judge is, well, that's stupid, right? If I tell you don't have an opinion, what are you going to have? The opinion that not having an opinion is not possible. We are going to have opinions. We are going to have judgments. It's, it's, it's sheer lunacy to pretend that we're not. The goal is to judge in a way that Jesus judges. Remembering that we are not perfect, we are, so we are to judge graciously. Right? Be curious about how people have ended up in the situation in which they have, knowing there's always a story, there's always a past. To judge without being judgmental. Right? That's, that's the hope. Judge without being judgmental. Be able to say, this is right, this is wrong, as far as I can tell, but not be a jerk about it. Right? I was talking to someone, it's been years ago now, who had done something stupid years and years and years and years ago. You, have, you ever done anything stupid years ago? And, and then it catches up with you and it causes problems. You ever had the, the past bite you? Right, this, this person I was talking to, the, this person's past was biting them. It was causing them some pain. It was causing their family some pain. And, and I talked to them at, at great length over multiple months at this point. Um, <laughs> And this person talked about how, you know, that mistake I made. And I said, you know, I've got to stop you there. Because it wasn't a mistake. It was a sin. Right? That was a sin. And you're forgiven. And I always want you to be my friend. I always smile when you walk in the room. But uh, let's just be clear about this, right? And that's judgment in a way that is hopefully gracious. And I hope that's what people say to me when, I, when not if, when I mess up. You know, Andy, that was a sin. You are forgiven. You're still my friend. Right? That, that's hopefully how we can judge each other and judge each other graciously. Now Jesus ends this little piece about judgment, about uh, splinters and logs, by changing the imagery. He talks about how we should not take that which is holy, that which is a pearl of great price, so to speak, and throw it before dogs and swine. Now this passage has been interpreted a bajillion different ways over the centuries. Looking at the context here when we're looking at how we treat each other, 
uh, how we judge each other, I think the best I can say about this is that something which is holy, holy means to be other, different, unusual. And, and a pearl is something that is rare. And, and every once in a while we run into rare and unusual information about each other, right? Otherwise known as skeletons. Anyone here have a closet without skeletons? Right? Doesn't happen often. Everyone has skeletons. And there are times when we encounter that information. Doesn't happen often, but there are times when we find out the dirt on another person. And how should we handle that? Do we tell everyone so that the, our neighbors, the dogs, can go start yipping it around the neighborhood? How's that go usually? Blows up in your face. They start barking about you you get trampled underfoot. Right? That's how I understand this. This is one more uh, aspect of the way we are to judge and care for each other graciously. We are to carry each other's pearls with the care they deserve. Now there's one more twist on, on this whole passage. If you look at the beginning of this passage, we've been looking at this, this phrase, judge not lest ye be judged by that same measure, and uh, looking at judging people in a way that says, you know, clearly this is sin. Uh, I forgive you and, and, and we're still friends. This is still going to, I'm not leaving you behind. That all assumes that the judgment that we're looking at here is the judgment we have of each other. Right? The, the judgment we have of each other. It doesn't actually say in the passage who is doing the judging. So if there's a double meaning here, I, I think there might be. Jesus has a double meaning here. It is not just judge not lest you be judged by that same measure referring to the way that I judge you and that will impact how you evaluate me. I think this is a, also can apply to how God judges us. If you think of the logic of forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us, judge us our sins as we judge others who have sinned against us, I think this is the way that God judges us. I hope that when we stand before the one who will ultimately judge us, we can say, we have judged other graciously, and I'd like you to judge me in the same way. We are judged based upon how much we reflect the graciousness and holiness of the one we follow. I think this is not just a matter of importance for the health of our community. I think how we judge is a matter for the salvation of our souls. And so I would hope this day that we would be clear that we're going to judge. We are going to. We're going to have opinions. We're going to say this is right and this is wrong. And to say otherwise would just be sheer lunacy. We're going to have opinions. So when we judge, let us judge in a way that is not judgmental. May we name sin without ostracizing those who sin. May we tell the truth without glossing over our own need to confess just as dearly. May we judge as Jesus judged, never forgetting that we are all under the same judgment. Amen. come to a time when we confess, when we have fallen short of what God calls us to be, 